This junk that you now see on your screens and which endlessly closes and opens is called Chromebook. Although if you take into account the price for which I bought it, it can be called poor book for people from third world countries. This is exactly what Kremlin devils want to do to my native Ukraine with the help of rockets landing on peaceful cities. Don't you want to stay with us in the second world, want a better life? Then we will send you to the third world. Missiles fly into the civilian infrastructure, which is why our electricity is sometimes cut off. But with all that sanctions they have, they soon will be in the fourth world with their allies. Since we are having a bad times right now, we need to save electricity at least a little. On the secondary market I found such a very energy efficient laptop from Lenovo. And in general, many of the manufacturers of computer hardware make such poor books. Let me now guide you through the key advantages and disadvantages of which there are a lot of them. But let's start with the advantages and the first and key advantage thanks to which you watch this video is the low price of this product. Of course it's for used one, but there are a lot of copies with this price on the secondary market, so there is something to compare and choose from. The second and no less significant advantage is just perfect autonomy, and not even thanks to the battery, it isn't that capacious. It just has extremely energy efficient components, which is why working for 8 or 10 hours is not a problem for this calculator. You probably already thought that since it's energy efficient, it means it will not run smoothly. Well, depending on how you look at it. The fact is that this is a so called Chromebook, which means that the operating system of a heavy smoker from Google Chrome OS is installed here. The system runs smooth on it, yes, but isn't the spectrum of possibilities in Chrome OS much wider than of the calculator? This is just an overclocked browser. Here you can see what it can. Not that big functional, isn't it? No more than in an ordinary smartphone. But I wouldn't have gathered all of you here if I didn't know how to make this smartphone work like a normal Windows computer. Yes, I forgot to say that formally it is not possible to install an alternative operating system on this laptop except the aborted Chrome OS. But only today and only now I will demonstrate how to turn a Chromebook which has the functionality of an ordinary smartphone which is not even Xiaomi into a simply ugly laptop on Windows. To do this you will have to disassemble the laptop a little not only because I have schizophrenia and I like to disassemble everything and assemble it back but also because we need to unscrew the screw that blocks the recording on the internal memory of this calculator. It is disassembled like all that shit that I disassembled earlier, not very difficult. The construction is too easy for a genius like me. All you need to do is unscrew the screws on the back cover, then turn over and open the laptop to unhook the top plate with the touchpad and keyboard. Easy. Now I disconnect the keyboard and touchpad cables. The cooling system here shows simply phenomenal performance. The CPU throttles from just looking at it. I disconnect the battery just in case, because then I didn't know what exactly I had to unscrew to remove the right protection on the drive. Therefore, all I had enough brains for was to disassemble the laptop completely. Also, all I had to do was just serve the internet a little more and find the instructions. After I disassembled the entire laptop without knowing why, then partially assembled it, I calmed down a bit and realized that I had to unscrew this one damn stupid screw. Now that I have completely assembled the laptop, I need to open it to press the key combination escape, this shit the name of which I don't remember, and the power button, then ctrl plus d plus enter. Now just ctrl plus d, then you need to wait until the settings reset or what is it like. I did it a long time ago and I am too lazy to look at the instructions for a detailed explanation. In short, we do all the steps in order to install a custom BIOS, and already through the new BIOS, we will have the opportunity, just like in case of a normal PC, to install another OS, and we also will need internet connection. After the laptop reboots, press Ctrl plus Alt plus T, the console suddenly pops up in which you need to write shell, and here is a command as long as my one and Z. I have been typing it probably for two hours, after that, wait a little. Here we will choose point 2, yes of course, yes, yes, probably finished. 
A complete step-by-step -step guide, if I will not forget, I will leave in the description under the video. The poverty of this laptop can be traced even in the way it closes and opens. If you manage to open it, you don't want to close it, so as not to try to open it again later. I connect a mouse, I connect a flash drive with a custom Windows 10, that's what we have. Damn fucking bastard, the seller said that the CPU here is N3060, but it's 3050. Why me? This is the BIOS we have right now, this is something like American Megatrends. We select the boot menu and here is our Dixon Data Traveler flash drive. Press enter and voila! Now you can install Windows. Windows because it is far from Windows. And as I already said, it's a custom OS. I chose it because normal Windows 10 cannot be installed on this computer because its memory is only 16 GB. Oh shit. This Windows after installation takes only 3.28 GB of space on a laptop. I personally need this laptop on Windows to record shit using the microphone because thanks to the absence of propellers, this is absolutely silent laptop. And thanks to this autonomy, oh no, it's not true, it's a bug, 8 to 10 hours maximum. And I like it, but the advantages end here, and then I will talk about the abnormal number of disadvantages with which this Chromebook is literate. First of all, there is no backlight on the keys, that is, with the onset of night, if you do not know how to type without looking at the keyboard, then you have a big problem. The display is too terrible here, you can forget about editing photos or any other work in which the quality of the display plays a key role. Color rendering is terrible, viewing angles, although I usually don't pay attention to it, but in this case the picture changes even with a small deflection from the center, in a word, it's terrible. But the fact that the screen can be opened so much is already an advantage. The sound and more preciously its quality and even more preciously the sound quality of the built-in speakers to convey all the wretchedness of the sound emitted by this shit collator, words alone will be not enough, so listen by yourself. Well, did you like it? And I enjoy it almost every day. What else? Not enough USB ports, only two. The touchpad is too terrible to use, so I plug in a mouse. What else? That's probably all. It has a card reader, and if for some reason you are not satisfied with the entire 16 megabytes of memory of this computer, then the maximum you can do is to install an SD card or throw this laptop to a trash can. I almost forgot, you must be wondering how smoothly this laptop runs. Speed is its feature, but not to be unfounded, this is how quickly it surfs the browser. A real monster, isn't it? Okay, jokes aside, it is possible to get used to its speed, but of course, it's not as fast as a normal PC, but you still can use it. It's better not to turn on YouTube videos higher than 720p, and you will not notice the difference in quality on such a bad display. As for games, despite of the fact that the computer has only 16 GB of memory and the only possibility to expand it is plugging the microSD card into the card reader, is no problem. I have a 128GB memory card on which I installed a dozen old games from a normal PC, and this monster of energy efficiency can give you the opportunity to play such a classic as Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl on minimal graphic settings, of course. But still, it's comfortable to play and you can pause the game with this FPS. Next, I will show you the games that was possible to launch on this laptop and along the way I will tell you about the troubles I had during the gameplay. Well, the first of the troubles was overheating and throttling. When the temperature of the CPU reaches 90 degrees, the CPU resets its frequency from 2160 to 1600. This problem can be fixed, but I'm too lazy to do it. Solving another problem is unlikely to be possible, the optimization of game for innards of this piece of plastic, or vice versa, the optimization of innards of this plastic for games. I don't know what would be easier to do, as you can see the GPU is not loaded to a maximum. This is almost in all games I have tested, maybe this laptop can handle such a games, but the graphic solution from Intel is not optimized for this, and that's why even such old games as Left 4 Dead turn into a test of the stability of your psyche. But in most cases it will be much better than 80% of games released on smartphones. For example, Half-Life can also run smooth on minimal settings on this device. 
In general, there are lots of calculators of this type on the secondary market, but if you're going to install Windows on a Chromebook like I did and oh god play games on it, then make sure that your laptop is equipped with an x64 CPU, that is an Intel CPU, because there are also laptops based on ARM architecture and there is no longer a laptop, it's almost a tablet. Well, I think I've said enough about this monster, so see you soon. Ah!